Hi guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on cellular respiration. Uh, now, cellular respiration is, is two big words put together, but it's really not all that complicated. Um, basically, cellular respiration is the breakdown of glucose uh, into energy. So these guys right here, they are performing cellular respiration at probably very remarkable rates. But they are able to break down glucose, which they ate earlier that day, and make energy out of it. Cellular respiration is something that occurs in both plants and animals. Um, so here I have a diagram of a squirrel eating a flower. Uh, the flower is the plant and the squirrel is the animal. Both of those things actually do have to do uh, cellular respiration in order to get energy. In my last video I talked about how plants uh, use photosynthesis to make food. Well that food is no good unless it's broken down into energy. The way that it breaks down is through the process of cellular respiration. That occurs in an organelle called the mitochondria. That's this organelle right here. So important thing to know is that it occurs in both plants and animals. So the cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria. That's this organelle right here. Uh, this is a little bit of a complicated organelle, but um, all these parts play a very important role in actually what the mitochondria does. So it has an outer membrane. So the, the outermost membrane is um, like the covering over the entire thing. Here's what's interesting is that mitochondria also have an inner membrane. They, all this squiggly stuff right here in the middle, this is all their inner membrane. They also have uh, right in here all this, all this stuff inside of the inner membrane. That's called the matrix. That's, um, that's like the, uh, the cytoplasm of the inside of the mitochondria. So there is some very important, there's, there's three important steps to cellular respiration. We're going to have some stuff that occurs on the outside of the mitochondria in the cytoplasm. We're going to have some important stuff that occurs um, inside of the matrix, inside of the, inside of the innermost part of the, of the mitochondria. And then we're going to have some stuff that occurs on the inner membrane itself, literally on the membrane itself. So some important things to know about cellular respiration is first off that food is required and that food is in the form of glucose. Glucose is a very simple sugar with the chemical formula C6H12O6. Um, so glucose is a type of sugar. It's a very simple sugar. It's found in, well, pretty much everything that, that has a carbohydrate. It's found in, in, in sodas, it's found in chips, it's found in potatoes. Uh, it's found in oatmeal, uh, found in milk a little bit. I mean, it's almost found in everything. Glucose is broken down into energy, and that energy is in the form of ATP. ATP is the energy currency of our cells. Everything in our cells, or nearly everything in our cells, relies on energy in the form of ATP. Here's the equation for cellular respiration. We have six oxygens which are going to react with one glucose molecule and then there's going to be a series of reactions occur. This arrow here represents a series of reactions. Um, most of those reactions are going to occur in the mitochondria. So I'll abbreviate that MOTO. Uh, we're going to get uh, some carbon dioxide which hey, that's where the carbon dioxide comes from that we give off. We're going to get some water and then we're also going to get some energy. That energy, again, will be in the form of ATP. So the key thing to know about cellular respiration, one of the most important things to know about cellular respiration, is that it's a process that breaks down glucose in the presence of oxygen. So cellular respiration requires oxygen to happen. Without oxygen, cellular respiration would not happen. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. Uh, cellular respiration actually has three parts. It has uh, a part called glycolysis. Now that's a pretty big word, but let's go ahead and break it down a little bit. What does gly mean? Well, gly kind of sounds like glucose, and that's because gly does mean glucose. So glucose is a type of sugar. Gly means glucose. And then lice. What does lice mean? Well, think of Lysol. Lysol that you know you spray on surfaces in your house. Um, Lysol, what does it do? Well, it breaks apart bacteria so that that bacteria is no, har no longer harmful to us. So lice literally means to break down. 
you put those two words together and wow you know we get a word that means to break down glucose that's exactly what glycolysis is the next part of cellular respiration is called the Krebs cycle it's also called the citric acid cycle um, it's called the citric acid cycle because citric acid plays a very important role in that cycle one of the reasons why you know you're supposed to eat those uh, oranges and grapefruits and all those other citric healthy foods and then the third part is the electron transport chain uh, that's also very similar to the electron transport chain that is in photosynthesis so here I have a diagram of what's going on. It all starts with glucose right over here. Glucose, he, he, he's the starting molecule right there. Uh, glucose is going to be broken down in a process called glycolysis, which is going to give off two molecules of pyruvic acid. Again, in your book, um, they might call pyruvic acid pyruvate. And uh, those two words are pretty much interchangeable. Pyruvate or pyruvic acid is pretty much the same thing. The, the pyruvic acid is going to go inside to the innermost part of the mitochondria, and then there's going to be a series of reactions occurring called uh, the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is going to give off a bunch of stuff and some unstable things. Those unstable things are going to go into the uh, membrane, the inner membrane of the mitochondria. That's this part right here. And then there's going to be this thing called the electron transport chain that occurs. Again, that electron transport chain is very similar to what occurs in photosynthesis. So all along the way, in each one of these steps, we're going to get a little bit of ATP. When we break down glucose in the process of glycolysis, we're going to get two ATP. When we break down pyruvic acid in the Krebs cycle, we're going to get another two ATP. And then finally, in the electron transport chain, you know how many ATP we're going to get? We're going to get 32 ATP. For a total of 36 ATP that's produced from one glucose molecule. That's pretty remarkable. But again, um, it is the electron transport chain. He's like the big kahuna. That, that is where most of the energy comes from, the electron transport chain. So glycolysis, as I mentioned, is a series of chemical reactions that break down glucose. Um, what, what is given off? Well, we get two ATP out of that reaction. One really important thing to know about glycolysis is that it occurs in the cytoplasm. It has nothing to do with mitochondria at this point. It actually does occur in the cytoplasm of your cells. And another thing that's really important to know is that it does not require oxygen. This would happen without oxygen being present. So even if you couldn't breathe, your cells would go still go through glycolysis. You wouldn't get very much energy out of it. Again, you only get 2 ATP. However, you're still going to get a little bit of energy. At the beginning of like glycolysis, the cell uses up two molecules of ATP to start the reaction. Think of this sort of like a startup loan. You know, if you want to start your own business, you're going to need a little bit of money. You're going to go to some rich person in your family and ask for, you know, a few thousand dollars in order to get your, your business started. So if we need a couple of ATP to get this reaction started. So we're going to use up two ATP in this process. Um, and that ATP comes from, you know, elsewhere in the reaction. But all in all, our, we are going to get four ATP at the end. So we're actually going to get two as a net product. So um, glycolysis, again, will break down glucose into two pyruvic acid molecules. In the process, that we are going to release four, but we need two to get the reaction started. So we actually get two as a net gain. A net gain we call as, as how many do we get overall. Overall, we get two ATP molecules. Again, we get, we get four total at the end, but we need two to get the reaction started. That's like our startup loan. We need two to get the reaction started. We get four at the end, so we get a, a net of two ATP molecules. Our next step in, in cellular respiration is called the Krebs cycle. Um, the Krebs cycle is a series of chemical reactions that break down pyruvic acid after it has come from glycolysis. One really important thing to know about the Krebs cycle is that it needs oxygen to occur. This is why we breathe oxygen. Oxygen is required in order to run the Krebs cycle. One more thing that's really important to know about the citric acid cycle is that it occurs inside of the innermost part, inside the innermost part of mitochondria is where the Krebs cycle occurs. So the Krebs cycle begins once 
Um, this the pyruvic acid has entered the innermost part of my mitochondria. Um, here's a diagram representing a whole slew of reactions, but just know that we are going to use some pyruvic acid. It's going to go through a cycle, series of reactions is going to occur, and we're going to get two ATP as an end product, as a net end product from the Krebs cycle. Our third most part of the cellular respiration equation is the electron transport chain. This occurs inside of the membrane of the inner part of mitochondria. So the inner membrane it holds the electron transport chain. Um, energized electrons move through uh, from protein to protein, so they're passed along from protein to protein uh, located in the inner membrane of mitochondria. Um, this makes 34 ATP, but two are used, so we have a net of 32 ATP. So again, we need two to start it up. We need two as our as our beginning loan, but we get 32 out of it. So you know they made a lot of money. And another th really th important thing to know about the electron transport chain is it does require oxygen. We need oxygen in order for this to happen. So here I have a diagram of the electron transport chain. Um, basically, we we have some hydrogen ions that are inside of the mitochondria. So these guys here are inside of the mitochondria. These guys can't go anywhere except for out of this thing right here. The cell membrane right here, all this gray stuff, it blocks these guys from crossing. So these guys cannot cross. They are not able to cross the cell membrane except through this, this protein right here called ATP synthase. So as these things cross, it's like a generator. It begins ATP spinning, and as it spins, it's um, it ATP synthase is going to spin, and as it spins, it's going to create ATP. So, bam! One, two, three, four. We're going to bust out 34 ATP through that um, that one that one ATP synthase right there at, for every glucose that's broken down. Where what is going to happen to those extra hydrogen ions? Well, they're actually going to bind with oxygen. This is why we need oxygen because. Um, we need to breathe oxygen so that we can have something for those hydrogens to go. Without those hydrogens, um, I don't know if you ever heard of hydrogen gas before, but hydrogen gas is extremely explosive. So we don't want these hydrogens right here. Um, we don't want them hanging around too much. So they are going to bind with oxygen so that we can actually create something that's stable. That is, that is water. So these hydrogen guys right here, they're going to bind with oxygen and create water. How Water is very stable. Water puts out fires, right? Um, hydrogen starts fires. So we bind it with oxygen and we get something that's really stable. And that's a good thing. So in that process, we're going to create some ATP. Um, all, all in all, we're going to create a net of 32 ATP. So we're going to create a lot from that big guy right there. Here's an overall reaction of what's going on. We have, uh, we have glucose, which is broken down in a process called glycolysis into pyruvate. Again, your book might call pyruvate pyruvic acid. We're going to get, in that process, 2 ATP total as, as, as a net gain uh, from glucose being broken down. We're going to get 4 total, but 2 are going to be the net gain. So we need 2 to, as a, to start it up, but we're going to get 4 total, so we're going to get 4 as a net gain. Then that, that pyruvic acid is going to travel into the innermost part of the mitochondria where we're going to have something called the citric acid cycle take place where, again, we're going to need two to start it up. But we're going to have four total uh, ATP molecules, so we're going to get a net gain of two ATPs. Then all those products are going to go into the innermost membrane, the inner membrane of the mitochondria. That's this stuff right here where we're going to have something called the electron transport chain. So we're going to pass along those electrons, and those electrons are going to basically go ahead and, and create energy for us, uh, energy in the form of ATP, and we're going to get, as a net gain, we're going to get 32 ATP total. So the electron transport, transport chain is where the big kahuna is. It's pretty much where everything, almost all of the energy that we get uh, comes from. Um, Let's go ahead and review where what needs oxygen and what doesn't. If we have things that are called anaerobic, that means they don't need oxygen. Uh, think of it like this. Aerobic means with oxygen. You know, you're, you're at the gym, you're doing aerobic exercise, you need a lot of air. Well, anaerobic is the exact opposite. Um, 
that is things like glycolysis. No oxygen is required, as opposed to aerobic, where we need oxygen.